Hello and welcome to the show. Now, AJA are always in the news and they've just released a big update for their Bridge Live multi-channel live video solution for remote production, contribution, collaboration, streaming and delivery. Of course, and who yep. better to tell us all about it? Uh, Bryce Button, welcome back to the show. Bryce, good to see you again. Thank you very much, guys. Very pleasant so to be here. And it's probably best to start with a quick overview of, of Bridge Live for, for, for those who may not have come across it before. And then, of course, a rundown of, of the latest uh, feature additions in, in, in this software update. Absolutely. So Bridge Live, for those not familiar, is a one RU unit uh, that's designed for multi-channel HD and ultra HD uh, streaming, uh, back-end uh, remote workflows, transferring um, signals for multiple cameras, uh, backwards and forwards, uh, range of remote workflows. And at heart, it basically has a um, range of SDI connectivity uh, for IO. And then uh, as originally designed, translating that and coding, decoding to all the world's major sort of codecs, uh, whether we're talking MPEG-4, uh, HEVC, JPEG-2000 for higher end picture quality, um, and ensuring you can get that to all the various platforms you need. So we found that it's serving everything from broadcast, uh, even you know feature production if you're trying to move signals around the world for producers to check things, mm. educational environments, medical environments. Uh, so it's a single one RU device that's capable of handling a, a, a wide range of those kind of needs. So mm. we're very excited to release the news in the last few days. We've put out our latest version of this uh, software as part of the software hardware package. And what it's added to the mix, which is huge, is a range of things, but probably the biggest news is that we're now including support for NDI, whether that's on input or output. So this is kind of a logarithmic change. It's not just SDI to NDI. Uh, it can also transcode between those various codecs and NDI. So we see an explosion of possibilities becoming available to all end users here uh, because you're effectively taking a really effective um, low bandwidth, high quality uh, IP approach for a lot of video workflows. And we all know that new techs NDI uh, has really taken off in the last couple of years. And so now whether you're transporting video across uh, IP or working with traditional SDI signals, the ability to mix and match all of this between your various codecs, uh, I think it's going to really serve the industry extremely well. Mm. So that addition of mm. NDI on, on the Bridge Live is actually a really important feature to have, isn't it? Absolutely, because in practice, what we've seen, uh, you know, at the highest end of IP workflows, you'd be looking at something like ST2110, uh, and that's going to be completely uncompressed, but it's also highly demanding. Uh, so you need a lot of bandwidth. You're talking fairly expensive switches, um, all that type of thing. Uh, and, and in practice for a lot of outfits, that may be a stretch too far right now, especially as things are a little financially and strained and, and so on as businesses deal mm. with a lot of realities. Um, so in terms of NDI, this is a pretty ubiqu ubiquitous standard. Uh, and also allows you to utilize things like even iPhones and so on, right? A lot of stuff can go on the NDI network, uh, aside from traditional cameras. So um, that ability to mix and match and extend your workflows and share it and get it backwards and forwards between the highest end 12G SDI, um, Two things as simple as, you know, as I said, uh, H H264 or HEVC, uh, mm. we really think we're going to be taught just how much you can do with this. Um, but it, it, it enables a range of networks with what we're doing here today, which is, you know, a, the new form of broadcast where we all get together and we're effectively using IP across the world here. Um, or actual broadcast itself where it makes most sense in some of the chains and especially for the smaller call letter stations. Um, it, it gives them the ability to mix and match these IP and coaxial approaches. Um, 
you know, one of the secondary features that comes with this, this new release is HLS support in both input and output. Uh, if you're not familiar with HLS, it's effectively sort of the protocol that's going on with things like iPads and that type of things where you share signals um, across HLS. So that expands the range of tools, you know, all the different hammers we have at our disposal yeah. uh, to bring them to yeah. service of great you know, transport. Yeah, it's, I mean, it's, and it, actually, it's it's a relatively new product, I, I guess, but it's been given, you've had some time to, you know, to see it evolve in, in the real world production environments, how people are using it. I'm interested, especially mm -hmm. with NDI and other additions that you've done here, which other additional industries could, could benefit from, from, from this now? Well, we've been, we've been kind of fascinated, right? Because you're right. Uh, it's a relatively young product as, as products go. And the right. rate at which we're involved in this thing is quite incredible. I, I take my hats exactly. off to, to the guys and, you know, how much they've been achieving in a short amount of time. Um, so outside of standard broadcast, uh, narrative production, various things like this, we found that, uh, the live is really extremely popular in things like college athletic departments. You know, um, these days everyone's a broadcaster to some degree or another. And we've yeah. got these big colleges where they're dealing with 40 sports and they've got a mandate to treat every sport with the same equality, right? Of exposure. Uh, cause one way or another, you've got parents and so on paying for programs that are not cheap. Uh, and they'd love to see, you know, whatever the kids are engaged in. Plus the public at large uh, has become fascinated with all these different sports. And so that's a simpler example, but it's stretching from athletics into other departments. You know, a lot of the media departments in schools are basically being tasked with helping, uh, with these elements of remote education and video courses can be a big part of that. So to give folks mm -hmm. something whereby they can take some of their more sophisticated kit, right? Recorders, cameras, what have you, that are going to be utilizing SDI to get the cleanest source signal. And it's, when it comes to production and post, you always try to start with the best you can, no matter where it's going from there. It might be landing up on YouTube or yeah. what have you. But the, the cleaner the signal is at the start of the whole process, the better for everyone. Uh, and then being able to combine that with something like NDI, where you can take current infrastructure, you're not having to buy brand new switches. You can plug in your iMac, you can plug in your MacBook Pro, and as long as you've got a gigabit there, there's enough bandwidth to get mm. really good looking and moving across that. And you're not having to rewire entire infrastructures or enterprises. Uh -huh. um, you can utilize what's there in terms of that transport yeah. stamp, the base, uh, and every year, you know, new techs, NDI work continues to bring better, better quality, uh, at these lower bandwidths. So bringing this all together, you know, you know, you'd be talking about these side industries, so to speak, it's definitely education, medical mm -hmm. things, like houses of worship, uh, a lot of a lot of smaller groups like yourselves that are, you know, trying to utilize yeah. efficient tools for, for this video communication. I find it very exciting. Oh. Yeah. So um, yeah. a big movement. I mean, we were already moving to remote production pre COVID. The last 18 months has expedited that transition for many. How, how do you see that move um, influencing the continued development of something like bridge live? One way or another, um, even as the pandemic starts to slow down uh, and the rest of it, I think the practical lessons and that accelerated path of learning when it comes to remote uh, workflows is going to be with us forever. Um, this is not just a temporary thing. It's the ability to stretch your talent pool uh, across the single, you know, a, a, across literally the planet from the concept of what always took a huge amount of gathering of people into a single location. That's beneficial for everyone. You, uh, um, what we're seeing with things like virtual production, where you're combining almost post skills really early in the production process 
um, that is evolving production. So tools like this mm -hmm. that have the ability to haul, backhaul multiple cameras at a time, um, you'll be able to sync them up soon enough uh, with another point release we have coming where you might have different items on different networks and what's important is getting them all to a central location elsewhere. Um, there'll be a, fi a further fine tuning of where this product is going. Uh, again, it's just the capabilities, the efficiencies. Um, and in many ways, we all get to benefit because you've been able to bring talent pools together from such vast distances. So I think we all benefit, mm. you know, um, it's perhaps yeah. not been the most pleasant way to learn how to do this stuff as fast as possible. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> it's been, been strained for all of us at some point or another, right? Um, but I, yeah. but I, th I think uh, the, the rapid evolution of this tool set, when you're talking about reacting to users and so on, yeah, a, a lot of the the speed with which we try to add these features is directly influenced by these growing demands and I don't think it's going to let up for some time. That's uh, and actually that's quite an interesting point because next year you know 22 we've got what a World Cup we've got a Winter Olympics we've got well, it's even year so there's going to be events there's also going to be a lot of um, activities going on now. Hello dogs uh, uh, you know the people are making yeah, their minds about up that. about <laughs> That's all right. We'll carry on. Um, I'm just glad it's not mine. And uh, mine. <laughs> uh, but with 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 22 coming up, you know, you've you've got all these events. Coming. There's going to be time for another update. There's going to be another release. Are we allowed any clues as to what might be, you know, what is in the pipeline, what is in the future? So, <laughs> you know, I think uh... AJ is not very good about going, hey, here's what we're about to put on the table and the buffet, right? <laughs> I know. Uh, we, we, we tend to prefer to kind of get there and then give you an idea what's going on. Uh, I, I think, uh, yeah, what we've tried to do is obviously, uh, for those who are watching this week, um, we've, we've clearly just come through the cancellation of the physical show for NAB, um, but things will still move forward. So our current intention is to really give everyone a really nice unveil of our latest efforts related uh, to what we're talking about with Bridge Live and some really big new news uh, of the type AJ has not shared in the past. Um, we've set a date of October 12th. And uh, if you remember the press, you'll be able to come to our virtual press conference at 9 a.m. on the 12th of October. Otherwise, I highly recommend that the viewers uh, Keep a good eye on AJ.com. And I, I think you'll be pretty fascinated about where we're we going with some new efforts. And, you know, the closest hint I can give is we, we're a company that produces a lot of tools and hammers so that you can go and make content. And uh, other tools are going to be required yeah. moving <laughs> forward uh, that evolve perhaps, you know, helping manage some of that. I have a feeling we'll be talking very That's soon nice. after um, October the 12th then, Bryce, <laughs> <laughs> to, uh, and we can catch up on everything that's going on. Thank you very much indeed. Um, all very informative, of course, as usual. And you can find out more about Bridge Live and everything else that AJ do at aja.com. Thanks to Media Proxy for their support, Kit Plus TV, and thank you for watching. We'll see you next time.